Welcome to The Real News Network. I'm Mark Steiner. Great to have you all with us once again. Now, earlier this month, Trump tweeted, quote, due to the fact that Democrats are unwilling to change our very dangerous immigration laws, we are indeed, as reported, giving strong considerations to placing illegal immigrants in sanctuary cities only, says Trump. He seems bent on not only deepening the divide in America, but using public policy as a tool of vengeance. What exactly would it mean to forcibly move refugees from the borders of the United States into citizen states that have declared themselves sanctuary cities and states? What would be the reasonable and just immigration policy for this country to be instituted? Now, nine states and over 200 cities have declared themselves sanctuaries for immigrants. California and the Bay Area are among them. And we are joined by Chesa Boudin, a public defender in the city of San Francisco and now a candidate for district attorney in that city. And Chesa, Welcome. Good to have you with us here on The Real News Network. Thank you so much. It's great to be here with you as well, Mark. So, Chester, let me ask you, as because if you become state's attorney in the next election, this will be your bailiwick <laughs> in some sense. Mm -hmm. so, yes, and, and, and just FYI, we do call it uh, district attorney here in San Francisco. Okay, I'm sorry. But, let me yeah. unbaltimoreize that, district attorney. <laughs> so, uh, so, so uh, how would you respond to Mr. Trump? Well, look, uh, what he's proposing is uh, immoral, unethical, and illegal. And I'd respond uh, by saying that loudly and clearly. Uh, we, we welcome immigrants here in San Francisco. Uh, they're the backbone of this city. They always have been uh, the backbone of our culture, of our workforce. Uh, and we're tremendously proud of being a sanctuary city, and we're going to continue to be a sanctuary city. But forcibly moving people from one place to another, uh, simply based on the country they were born in, treating human beings, immigrants, refugees as political pawns as a way to uh, create problems for political rivals is unacceptable, it's inhuman, and it's illegal. One of the things, before I play this first clip for you, one of the things that really struck me when I read his tweets was that it made me think of, um, of the slave ships dumping people in America or trains taking people in the Holocaust as their deaths. I mean, like, literally forcing people to go into a place they don't want to be and pushing them somewhere under armed guard. I mean, that's that's the vision that you have when you hear this. At least that's the vision it, I have. Absolutely. Trump is is acting consistent with how he's acted throughout his presidency and much of his life. He's acting as a coward. He's acting as a bully. And he's treating people who are less fortunate than him as political pawns to accomplish an agenda that has nothing to do with furthering the interests of national security, public safety, or humanity. So we're about to play you a short video clip of the mayors of Oakland and Seattle and the governor of California and what they had to say to Trump. The idea that this administration could use human beings, families, children to exact political vengeance on enemies is outrageous. It's illegal. It's immoral. It's unethical. Um, it's sophomoric. Uh, it's petulant, and it's uh, par for the course. Sticking them on buses is illegal, and he knows it, but it's not a threat to cities. We will step up to do our part to help, but we're also going to hold him accountable. We, This president has to follow the law. He knows what he's doing, he's proposing, is illegal. Um, and we in America expect the president to follow the law. It's a novel concept, but we do. Now, Chessie, if you were in a position of power, as these people are at this moment, uh, locally, what would you be saying to Trump uh, if he's about to take hundreds, maybe thousands of people and forcing them to move to the Bay Area of California? What would, you, what would your response to him be? Well, thanks, Mark. I want to, first of all, acknowledge the leadership and the courage of uh, so many of, of the political leaders in California and across the country in standing up to Trump on this issue and so many others. Uh, you know, what I would say to Trump is, First of all, immigrants are safe. They are welcome. They are part of our community. They are a cherished and trusted part of our community. And we're going to continue to welcome immigrants to the Bay Area. But we are not going to forcibly relocate people. We are not going to participate in turning refugees and immigrants into political pawns. And if people do forcibly transport uh, immigrants in violation of the law, it could potentially be a situation of kidnapping. Or, uh, or, or any number of other criminal charges, which we would investigate and prosecute to the fullest extent of the law if, in fact, uh, we're able to do so. We will not participate or condone human trafficking or kidnapping of people who are seeking refuge in our country. 
So I, I, and on the heels of that, I think that's a very powerful statement you just made. I haven't heard that said by anybody in terms of potential prosecutions against the federal government itself and against Trump, um, which would be an interesting kind of move. But this is what Fox News had to say. How is it okay to say, okay, we want to open up this country and bring them on in, and then when you say, all right, well, we'll bring them to your town, your city, they say they don't want them. I don't get it. President Trump is both trolling them and exposing them at the same time. I mean, the left doesn't, has never dealt with a president that would do it this way. Mm -hmm. And then when he says, well, okay, we won't just burden the border towns and the border states, Texas, Arizona, California. If we're going to let illegals into our country mm -hmm. and give sanctuary, then everyone should share that burden. They're put in a position where they say they want them. Now they don't. Okay, make your decision. Yeah. Make your choice. So, so I'm curious, you know, th this is an issue around immigration that deeply divides America. And I'm curious, as is somebody trying to build, people trying to build broader coalitions about what America should be, how do you respond to Fox, and how do you respond to the people that may be listening to Fox? Well, this is fear-mongering, it's xenophobia, and it's racism, plain and simple. It's unacceptable, and it's the tactic to try to get a racist, xenophobic president reelected. Uh, despite the fact that he's done nothing but make a mockery of the values that this country holds dear. Uh, it's unacceptable, and it's not true. In San Francisco, we are welcome immigrants every day. We have throughout this city's history, and we're going to continue to do so. That does not mean that forcibly relocating thousands or tens of thousands of people into a single municipality is good policy or is consistent with orderly uh, national security or public safety. It's not consistent with any of those things. And it's for that reason that folks are frustrated that Trump would even suggest this kind of outrageous political stunt. Now, I, I'm also very curious about, you know, when in these discussions, one of the things that's often missing is how do we perceive and think of a just immigration policy of this country? What does that look like? Um, and, and I'm curious your thoughts about that, because this is going to become, I think, major issues in the, in the political campaigns, both inside the Democratic Party, outside the Democratic Party, the general election as a whole. And there's something we really haven't grappled with, I think, in a very in, in any depth, deep and honest way. No, you're absolutely right, Mark. And, you know, there's a, a long way to go to realize our potential as a, as a safe haven for uh, people who are persecuted around the world, uh, you know, for the kind of uh, message and, and, and symbol that the Statue of Liberty has represented to people all across the world for so many hundreds of years. Uh, we should start our immigration policy with a recognition that family unity is a fundamental principle and that people who live in this country who are U.S. citizens or permanent residents who are participating fully in society should be able to enjoy family unification. That should be a first starting point. And a second starting point, a second principle should be that we are a safe haven to people being persecuted. No matter where they are, no matter why they're being persecuted, they can find safe haven in our shores. I think if we start with those principles and if we recognize the fundamental dignity of every single human being on this planet, we'll do far better than we're doing today under the Trump administration. And finally, there's one last thought and question for you, Chess, before we all have to go. Um, is that in 1971, Berkeley was probably one of the first cities in the country to become a sanctuary city when um, sailors and others protested being sent back to Vietnam and they declared it a sanctuary and even a few of the sailors stayed back and were given sanctuary by the city of Berkeley. So people often like to set the Bay Area up and California up in general and certain areas of our country up in general as different from the rest of America. And I think that this is, and this is, you're seeing part of this in terms of Trump's attempt here again to further deepen that divide, as I said in the opening. So how would you respond to that? San Francisco and the Bay Area uh, in general have long been leaders of progressive values, of technological innovation, and of cultural diversity. We're going to continue to play that role. My campaign for district attorney in San Francisco is just another example of the many ways in which San Francisco is far ahead of the national curve in terms of industry, technology, culture, and yes, politics and criminal justice reform. Well, Chester Boudin, this has been a pleasure to talk with you, and I look forward to talking to you more about as this kind of intensifies, as well as the campaign starting uh, for state's attorney. Uh, good luck with it all, and thank you so much for joining us here today on The Real News. Thank you so much, Mark. Look forward to speaking with you as well. And I'm Mark Steiner here for The Real News Network. Thank you all for joining us. Take care.